again and welcome to Simply Soprano Sax Starters. Let's go. Now, the whole point of looking at scales is to build vocabulary so that we can play proficiently. And um, every key has a scale we've already established. We're going through them and um, you'll be glad to know that very, very soon and in the next lesson, I'm going to fuse teaching you songs or a particular song and fusing in that particular scale or the key that the song is in. This is so that we can hit various targets. At the same time, we'll be looking at, you know, we could do this one of many ways. We could hit um, embouchure, which is how you actually place the mouthpiece in your, uh, in your mouth or wrap your lips around it so that no, uh, it's nice and tight and no air escapes. We can look at that as a solo lesson and it's very beneficial. My approach though is to try and capture things like embouchure, things like your tone, things like long tones, things like scales, capture all of them in the one lesson. I think it's more beneficial. And in order to do that, you learn a song and then you use the skills within the song. So that's what we're going to try and do next time. Today, however, I am so honored and I'm so excited. By the way, before I tell you why I'm excited, just remember this, you are really helping me when you subscribe. So those of you who are new to the channel, do me a huge favor, do three things, okay? Right, first of all, press subscribe. And then please hit the bell so that as soon as I put some new material in, you get notified. And then number three, please leave me some comments. I can't wait to hear from you. It's such a nice thing to receive comments. And that's actually what I'm excited about because I received a comment um, from an enthusiastic sax learner, you super sax learner, you. And this amazing person, you'll actually see the comment in uh, my last recording. This person mentioned about squeaking. He said, how are you playing? Um, and why does it sound, or how does it sound so smooth um, without any squeaks? So I decided to treat two things today. I'm going to teach you a scale, um, and then I'm also going to teach you uh, how to avoid squeaks and those horrible um, you know, sounds that we, we get when we, when we play sometimes, okay? Um, especially as beginners. Now, a quick intro to the channel. I always like to say this. This is about learning the saxophone. The fingerings for the saxophone are all the same. Uh, the only difference is that each saxophone has a different key or if they share the same key, like this one, this is a soprano saxophone, it's straight, but you see that most of them are curved. Now this shares the same key as a tenor sax, but all of them use the same, very same fingerings. So whatever I teach you here, it may sound different when you play it on your saxophone if it's not a soprano, but the fingerings are the same. So you'll end up with the same melody or the same progression, it just might be in a different key, okay? Fabulous, all right, so let's go. Squeaks, let's fix squeaks. Firstly, your squeaks could be down to one of three things. First thing could be about this little friend here. When you are putting your reed on, and I'm actually going to demonstrate this. When you're putting your reed on, you need to be incredibly careful, okay? Um, three things that you need to remember when you're putting your reed on, which will help seal off air. Believe it or not, putting wax, okay, on your cork, putting wax on your cork will actually save you, number one, the life of the cork. It will save you from having to repair your saxophone for many, many years. It will preserve the life of your saxophone. Your cork will last longer. Um, because that's what aids this to slide on without friction. Um, also, one thing that it does do is it helps to seal off any escaping air. Okay, so escaping air is one of the reasons why you get horrible squeaks. 
and, and just that horrible jerky sound, okay, that isn't a lovely flow. One of the reasons is escaping air and you can avoid that by sealing off. Now, I'm not saying completely immerse your cork in cork grease, but actually uh, apply your cork grease evenly and as you slide this down, the minutest holes sometimes that you can't see are actually blocked. So that's number one. Number two, this mouthpiece here, um, it operates through the vibration of your reed. Okay. Now the way you put your reed on, I'm going to put this down, because this point here is probably one of the main reasons why most people experience squeaking. It's so easy to put this on, but it's so easy to put it on the wrong way. And um, if you put it on the wrong way and it doesn't vibrate enough or it doesn't have enough moisture, it will produce squeaks. Now, everyone produces squeaks at some point, but if yours is incredibly squeaky, well then it's time to look at how you've placed your reed on. Now, when I was starting off, I noticed that whenever I rushed the process of putting my reed on, um, almost all the time I would have problems with sound, with tone. I'd always have problems with squeakiness and um, it was just a case where I found I was using more breath than I needed um, at some points in time and it was just a horrible experience anytime this didn't go on well. So here we go. You have your reed. Remember, the tip of your reed is the most delicate part. I would keep my fingers away from there. Right, so you take your reed, you have your mouthpiece. I would always put my ligature on my mouthpiece first. So you have it there. And then take your reed, hold it about there, and then push your ligature so that it's closer to the tip. Okay, but not all the way, so not about there, just about there. Remember, this is delicate, so be careful. And slip your reed in there. Now you can see where the space allocated to the reed ends. I need you to keep allowing it. You see this place where it curves? It almost looks like a nail, okay, the bottom of your nail, not the tip. That bit. Um, just put your finger there and then allow it to slide. And just aid it carefully to slide down and make sure that your ligature is about there. Okay, here we go. Now, now that my ligature is on, here's the important bit. Don't go straight on and start tightening. You need to put your fingers, okay, so I put my thumb and my forefinger of my left hand because I'm right-handed. I put those two parallel on each side of the reed. And I make sure that the tip of my reed is placed such that there is a small, thin horizon line, I call it. A thin horizon line of black, so that it looks like a fingernail, okay? Can you see that? Now, if this is too high or if it's too low, it will affect your sound and you may probably get squeaks. Now start to tighten it and here's another thing. Number three is how you tighten your ligature. Don't over tighten your ligature. As soon as it's firmly holding your reed, stop turning your, um, your, your tweezers. Okay? Stop, stop turning them. Or your pegs. Stop turning them. As soon as it's firm, leave them alone. Alright? Some people over tighten their ligatures when they're you know, adjusting. And what that does is it holds your reed down so firmly that there is not enough vibration. This instrument works because as you blow and as you um, use the correct embouchure, right, with pressure, have it upside down. As you blow and as you apply pressure, As you do that, what you will find is it is vibrating at a very super, super fast rate, okay? And that vibration is what produces the sound together with the wind, 
that you're using. Can I give you one more tip? You can do this. Before you start playing, always slip this into your mouth. Like that. So what I usually do is I, I slip this into my mouth while I am getting the rest of my equipment out. This is the first thing I take out, put it in my mouth, and then I start you know, adjusting things, getting my saxophone out, uh, getting my sitting position or standing position ready. Okay, so that's in your mouth. Give it about 20 seconds, and then you take it out and do exactly that thing that I told you to do. See? Now I've done this for some time, so I'm, I'm quite quick, um, but take your time. Okay, I still, up till now, I still make tiny mistakes. Can you see? So I'm carefully, now I wear glasses, so I'm gonna put my glasses on just to make sure that, ah, there you go. So there's that horizon line, and then I'll push the ligature down. Now, once the ligature's down, I'm not, remember, I'm not going to tighten. There you go. And then I'm going to use my thumb and my forefinger to align it so that it's flush and it's not leaning too much to the left or to the right, but it's centered perfectly, lying on that allocated space. All right, once I'm happy and your ligature should be about there, once I'm happy, it's time to tighten. Remember, don't over tighten. Right, now I'm gonna slip that back on. Remember, I've already greased this, okay? But you should have some cork grease. Let me show you what it looks like. For those of you who probably haven't seen, I've got about three of these, but that's what cork grease looks like. It looks like um, lip seal, but it's not. And I have tried lip seal before. There are so many arguments online that talk about whether lip seal is compatible um, and you'll find people that say yes, and they swear by it. They say they've used it for ages and ages, and it's absolutely fine. I started using Lip Seal, and I'll be totally honest with you, it wasn't the best experience for me. I have more than one, and I wanted to show you the rest. But they, it looks like they're very shy, and they don't want to come out to play. Hang on a minute. Here we go. There's another one. Rico, this is actually my favorite, because it's not too greasy. It's, it's just perfect. Um, so that's the one that I use regularly. And then I've got two more on standby, just in case I've been a bit care careless that day and uh, I probably left one lying somewhere. I don't know where it is. So I've always, I've always got a spare because I find that they are absolutely um, vital. Your cork grease is your friend. It preserves the life of your saxophone in such, such a meaningful way. Right, so now um, I slide it on. And you saw how I slid my mouthpiece on quite carefully, so I'm not ramming it, I'm not, and I'm carefully doing it so that my reed um, isn't affected. Now it's time to test it. Whenever I'm about to play, again, you might find this disgusting. I don't know if you want to find another way around it. Most professional saxophone players um, do it as well. In fact, if you watch um, them play live, you'll find a lot of them in the middle of playing, they wet uh, their reeds. Okay? And they do it very quickly and it's quite subtle. You might miss it, but they do it. All right, so let's see what it sounds like. Lovely. It just makes me want to play and play and play. I find, and I'm going to be honest with you, I find that the longer you spend on actually placing your read on carefully, the better your tone for every single session. So give yourself enough time to put the read on. In your practice sessions, account for the time that you place, um, actually put your mouthpiece together. Some of you don't have um, a two-piece like this where you just put your mouth uh, piece straight onto the sax. Some of you have three pieces. I had a saxophone like that. It's actually in one of my earlier recordings where it was three pieces. And in fact, um, if you have a Yanagasawa, there is a model that is like this, and there's a model that has uh, three extra pieces. The more you have to assemble, the more time you need to give yourself. So for instance, I go to work, I work full time, and 
sometimes I practice during my break because it's my way of unwinding and it just relaxes me and actually I love playing this instrument, I actually really do. So I spend some time, I first I eat and then I wash out my mouth. Oh guys, that's really important. If you want to preserve the life of your saxophone, please remember to wash out your mouth. You may have eaten something all the way in the morning but you have residue in your mouth. Now all that stuff and gunk gets stuck in your saxophone, all right? The less, um, well, the more you actually wash your mouth out, um, the less problems you'll have in future. You could preserve your saxophone up to 10 years, I've heard, okay? Now, this one isn't that old. This is quite a new one. I bought this this year, um, and I'm really happy with it. And maybe I'll do a video about it sometime later, about your choices when you're buying a, a saxophone. But I absolutely love this. It's a Yamaha, and um, yeah, it's 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 just great. Um, but I want to preserve it, so I wash out my mouth. Um, and then, my whole point being how you plan your time so that you're not in a rush, and you can place your reed carefully on your mouthpiece. So I give myself that extra five minutes on either end of my rehearsal sessions. So at the beginning, I've got about five minutes to assemble this. Now you you should know how long it takes you, especially if you're starting out. So if it takes you a bit longer, um, give yourself a bit more time. Okay, so you could give yourself about seven minutes. Plan your rehearsal sessions. Now the reason why you have to is because there's always something that you're doing either end. You're doing something before, you're doing something after. So give yourself enough time. And having given yourself enough time, you'll find that your tone, your sound, is a lot better when you spend that time well putting your read on.